In today's episode, I'm going to lay it all on the table by sharing with you the top five biggest mistakes that I made as a beginner trader when I was getting started. But I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to share with you the biggest weakness that I continue to struggle with in my own trading today. I'm going to share this with you because I want you to know that you're not alone in the struggles that you may be having in your own trading. Now, I'm going to use my trades from today, which is my biggest loss of the year to date, as a case study of what I'm still struggling with today. I want you to know that I don't feel that I have a natural aptitude for trading. This didn't come naturally to me. It wasn't easy for me. I had to really work at it. I struggled with trading. It took me years before I turned the corner and I became consistently profitable. And I want you to know that because I want you to realize that in spite of perhaps a lack of aptitude and a lack of skill in certain areas that are required, I was still able to turn the corner. So as I share with you these five mistakes that I've seen in my own trading, but I've also seen in so many other traders, and as I share with you my biggest struggle that I still have today, my hope is that this will bring you up on a day when you're feeling down and that you'll remember that nothing as great as being a trader will come without a lot of hard work. So let's go ahead and jump into today's case study. And I can go ahead and share with you the first mistake. It's trading with too much size. This is a classic beginner mistake that I made all the time when I was getting started. And in fact, today's trade um, is also an example of this. I went in with too much size. So the problem for a beginner trader going in with too much size is that as a beginner, you will not have conditioned yourself to be comfortable with the type of losses that can come with trading with big size. You trade with 10,000 shares, and yeah, you can get a five ten thousand dollar winner. That's awesome. But the five ten thousand dollar loss, are you ready? Are you prepared to handle that? Do you know how you're going to react when you take that type of loss? Because you might think, oh, I could take that kind of loss. And then it happens to you. And all of a sudden, it starts to affect the way you trade. You start to get angry, emotional, aggressive, and you begin this spiral. So that's the reason that as a beginner trader, you have to start with smaller size because you have to get really comfortable experiencing $50, $100 losses. Once you can experience that, like it's no big deal, then you go up to $200, $300 losses. Once you experience that and it's no big deal, you go up to $500, $700, $1,000, and so on. You don't just jump from taking $50 losers to taking $5,000 losers because the emotional response will be so big, you will not be able to handle it, and it can totally throw you off your center. So in today's trade, there's no doubt that I took too much size relative to the stock that I was trading. So let's look at the stock. Step number one, whenever I'm trading each day, whenever I'm going over these case studies, the first step is finding a stock to trade. Now I know for my strategy, because I'm a momentum trader, that I'm looking to trade stocks that are moving very quickly. So I'm using stock scanners to help me find those stocks. This scanner is my high of day momentum scanner, and it's searching for stocks that are moving up right now in real time. I have a couple different scans I use. Uh, I actually find a lot of my trades off of this top gainers scanner, which is showing us the top gainers in the stock market at any given time. I usually find you know, the top one, two, three here are the stocks that I do the best on. However, because I'm a volatility trader, I'm a trader who profits from stocks that are very volatile, I often am looking for stocks that have breaking news. So one of the ways I find breaking news is when I see a stock all of a sudden firing on my high of day momentum scanner. When I see it on the high of day momentum scanner, I know this thing is moving up right now. If I check the headline, and that's what I did. So GUTS Guts is on a scanner. I then check and I see that it's got news that just came out at 8.38. So I'm like, boom, all right, this stock has news. Now, when it first hits the scanner, it may have light volume in total. That was the case with this one. When it first hits the scanner, it may be up only, in this case, I think it was 30% or something like that, 40%. So it's starting to move higher, but it's not up 75, 80, 100%. It's not the leading gainer in the entire market yet, but it's moving in that direction. So for me, the best way to find those stocks is on that small cap high a day Momo scanner. That's showing me something that's moving right now with news. So this stock is squeezing up with news. All of a sudden, I'm like, all right, it's game time. Now, step three is when I look at the chart and I look for an entry. When I looked at the chart on this stock, I recognized immediately that it's a recent IPO. This was the first day of trading right back here. So I saw, oh, this stock is a recent IPO. Got it all-time high, about $14. And as it was squeezing up here, it goes 12, 13, 14. It came right up to that level. So then at that point, 
I'm looking for an entry and I was using the 10 second chart. We got this squeeze up here and a micro pullback and I'm like, here we go. This thing looks awesome. So at this moment right here, everything is looking pretty good. Mistake number two, trading with FOMO. So here's the thing with FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. Trading with FOMO means that you're afraid of missing a move right? So when something like this is popping up, for me, if I'm feeling FOMO, I'm going to jump in it really fast. And I'm going to overcompensate from that feeling of FOMO by taking even bigger share size than I would normally take. Why do I have FOMO on this particular day? This is, for me, my biggest weakness as a trader. My biggest weakness that I continue to struggle with is dealing with emotion, dealing with the emotion that comes with loss. I've been doing this full time for more than a decade, and it is still hard for me to experience big losses. So what happened to me recently, it was about three days ago. Well, actually, I would say in the last week, I've had a couple of really close calls. And this is probably not too surprising because we've been in a market that's been very, very strong. So over the last maybe two weeks or so, we have seen, I've seen my PL going like this. I mean, it's been like, over $150,000 in a very short amount of time. A lot of profit. The market's been going higher, but I've noticed I haven't made as much as I feel like I should have made because I keep selling and then seeing a stock going higher. When I sell and I see a stock go higher, it gives me, on the one hand, a sense of, well, hey, at least I made money. But on the other hand, the stronger feeling is, I'm an idiot. I sold way too soon. Now there's that feeling of needing to make up for it on the next trade. You make up for it on the next trade by being even more aggressive. So what ended up happening to me last week was I had a day where on my very first trade, I jumped in and lost $15,000. Lost $15,000 is a $15,000 loss right here on my very first trade. It happened within you know 30 seconds. I jump in, I'm down 15 grand. And that for me is three times my max loss. I set my max loss at minus $5,000, which means if I'm down more than $5,000, I won't keep trading. And here's the problem with this trade that I took. And this is the same thing today. On this trade that I took about a week ago, I took, I think it was 10,000 shares. I took a 10,000 share position and the stock dropped so fast, all of a sudden I was down 15 grand before I could even think. And I was like a deer, I was a deer in the headlights because rather than just cut the loss quickly, the number was so big that I just stared at it. I just watched. Now, this is, a, this is a, a mistake related to taking way too much share size, and it's a mistake related to FOMO. I had a fear of missing out, and so I jumped in this stock really quickly. And I would say we could actually add to this list and say mistake number three uh, is rushing slash chasing uh, entries. So rather than being calm, cool, collected, and waiting for a good entry, the third mistake, and this is just a huge one, and it ties into FOMO, is just jumping into a stock and chasing a stock as it's squeezing higher. Okay, so that happened to me last week on this trade right here. I end up going down uh, $15,000 on it. And now I was at a point where I had essentially what I would say crossed the point of no return from an emotional self-control perspective. I took such a big loss that I was like, well, today's going to be a really, really bad day. So who cares if I lose an extra five grand? I'm already down 15,000. And I proceeded to continue trading. Now I ended up making money that day and finishing up over $5,000. But it was not a good day of trading from the perspective of self-control and from the perspective of that first trade. I came in swinging hard. I was emotionally fueled up. I had FOMO. And on that first trade, I, instead of taking a small starter position, I went all in. And then I faced a really big loss that I wasn't prepared for. And then things started to spiral from there. As the week continued, I bounced back on Wednesday with some decent trading, or Thursday, I think it was. But then on Friday, I was up $7,000. And then in one trade, lost like four grand or five grand. And I was again, just felt this like real frustration, real disappointment of the sense of loss that I had just lost that money. So come back in Monday morning. I sit down uh, Monday morning. This was yesterday. And on my first trade, once again, 
a decent enough setup and I went red. 900 bucks. Is it the end of the world? No, it doesn't matter. I ended up making my way up to green 2,500 and then in one trade lost 3,500 and was back to red 1,000. And I should have walked away right then and there. But I got stubborn. I once again was emotionally triggered. This is the thing with the emotions is that once you get into this heightened emotional state, and this is my biggest flaw, is that my fuse is so short. It takes like such a small amount to trigger me. And then next thing you know, I'm right back into this state of revenge trading, being super angry, super frustrated, and just, you know, lacking discipline in my trading. So on today's trade, Oh, and by so by the way, I finished yesterday down uh, ten thousand dollars. By the end of the day, I was down ten thousand. It could have been a small nine hundred dollar red day, but I kept trading, kept trading, kept trading for no good reason. I just I didn't want to have a red day. I was not willing to accept that loss. And so then uh, I finished down ten thousand. So as a result, today when I sat down, how am I feeling? Obviously, I'm still emotionally activated. I'm feeling fired up. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm looking for something I can swing hard on. I'm thinking, even though I know I shouldn't, I'm thinking, I want to make back $10,000 today. So when this stock hits my scanners, I jumped in it super fast and with bigger size than I should have. Immediately, I'm in with 1,000 shares. I double to 2,000. I add 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 shares as it's squeezing higher. I add right here. As it pops up, I then add as it hits 14. I added at 14 because I'm thinking, all right, this thing just went from 12 to 14. I'm looking for a squeeze on this up to 16, 17, 18 dollars a share. Why am I thinking like this has such home run potential? Well, let's look at a chart from last week. We could look at a chart from last week and you'll see that we had this stock last week, CERO, that did something really incredible. And basically, gosh, it was, it was, 10 minutes, the stock squeezed from about $6 a share on a somewhat similar setup all the way up to $28 a share. And you know what? If that had happened today, I probably would have been up $75,000 or more. Um, but it, it happened on this day, and I only made $3,000 on this move. Stock goes from 4 to 28 and I was beating myself up that I can't believe I only made 3000 on it. It's pathetic. So stupid. I should have, should have, could have, would have. Anytime you're saying shoulda, coulda, woulda, emotions are coming in and they're affecting the lens that you're looking at things through. So now I'm looking at things through an emotionally sort of fueled lens. I'm like, you're an idiot. You should have done this. You should have done that. You should have been more aggressive. Be more aggressive on the next one that pops up. When it's a recent IPO, it's a recent SPAC merger, you jump on, be aggressive, and you know, good things are going to happen. Well, you know, that was not the case today. So the problem today was, um, and I'll pull my slides back up. I'm now in this position because I added at 12 right down here and I added at 14. Now my cost basis is way up here around $13 a share. On this candle, it drops to about 11. I'm down $2 a share. I held because I'm like, well, holy smokes, deer in the headlights. And I sold on this candle right here as it's dropping all the way back down to nine and down to $8.50 a share. This was me bailing out. I was bailing out of the trade. And in that one trade, in a matter of how many seconds is this? 90 seconds? Less than two minutes? I lost $20,000. $20,000. Look at how fast that happened. So when we're talking about my biggest weakness, my biggest weakness, without a doubt, is that I fall victim to my emotions. I struggle with emotional self-control and trading. Now, because I have more than a decade of experience, even on my days where I become emotionally hijacked, I, I'm still usually pretty good at choosing the right stocks to trade because I have so much educated intuition. But there are times like this where I'll just get totally smoked. I took way too much size. I didn't bail soon enough. And next thing you know, I'm capitulating and I'm selling at the very bottom. Now, it did end up bouncing back up a little bit, but that doesn't mean I should have uh, held it longer. So I think you could see how, because I missed a couple of trades last week and didn't feel like I did as well as I could, I started trying to step up and be more aggressive. And that ended up backfiring on me big time because I started getting impatient. I was stepping up, but not in the right way. I was stepping up by just 
trying to buy something faster and quicker, not by being like calm, cool, collected, and then just taking much bigger size on a really sort of solid setup. I was just like really jumpy. And part of that was because we kept seeing these stocks that were going crazy. And if you didn't jump fast, you were missing the whole move. And so that kind of fueled me into this state of jumping really quickly. And so that backfired and it backfired last week. And then it sort of, it's continued into this week. So as I look at this trade, I always think it's important after taking a big loss to ask yourself, you know, what could I have done differently on this trade? So the first thing is some people will say, Ross, you should be using a stop order. So there's two things that I'll say about this. Number one, stop orders don't work pre-market and they don't work after hours. And this was a pre-market trade. So a stop order wouldn't have helped me whatsoever because it wouldn't have, even, I can't even have used it. But number two, a stop order in small caps is not going to work as well as a stop order might if you're trading indices or you're trading futures or maybe you're trading certain large caps that are very thickly traded. Even if you're trading options and you use a stop order, you know what happens? The market makers see your stop orders and they flush it and you, you watch, you get filled at the very bottom of the spread and then the price comes right back up. That's called stop hunting. So even if I could use a stop order and during regular trading hours, I can, I choose not to because there will be so much slippage on your exit you will get just sort of essentially destroyed. Market makers abuse people who have stop orders. And so you learn not to use them. So if I had had a stop order and this was a regular market hours trade, I don't actually think it would have substantially changed the loss. Maybe if I had set the trigger sooner, I would have exited sooner, but I still would have gotten a lot of slippage on my exit because I was trading a stock that didn't yet have a lot of volume Yes, it had news, and I thought traders were going to see that and volume was going to come in, but it didn't come in. And so as a result, there wasn't a lot of volume when I was buying, and there wasn't a lot of volume when I was selling. So I got a lot of slippage on my order. So using a stop order wouldn't have, wouldn't have worked in this case. Number two, smaller share size in total. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, if I had traded that just in at 12, I could have sold at 14 for $2 a share. I could have actually made a couple thousand dollars on that trade. But instead, I added to the position. So number three, I could have chosen not to add at the high of day. Now, adding at the high of day was a combination of being stubborn and FOMO. Um, I think I was just like, this stock is going to go. Like, I know it's going to work. And then the FOMO of, I'm not going to miss it. And this one's going to be the next one that goes to 18 or 20. And I'm going to ride this wave. So I think in that moment where I was adding aggressively, it was a combination of being stubborn and having FOMO. Number four, I could have been more patient on my entry. Um, and, and that ties in with number five. I could have waited for more volume and a confirmed pullback or a curling pattern. The biggest challenge that I have is when I see stocks that go from $4 to 18 or 20 and they hardly pull back at all. That is like the worst thing in the world for me because it ingrains in me that I have to jump in like the second I see the stock, because it's not going to pull back. And the higher it gets, the more extended it's going to get, and then I just can't get in. And if I trained myself to only buy on a pullback, I know I would make less money. I know I would make less money because of the number of times that I'm trading volatile breaking news stocks that are just surging up because they have news that just came out. The first spike is created by high frequency trading algorithms. And then that next wave is retail traders jumping in and riding the momentum. And so I don't, you know, I don't know a way around that. I tried tracking my trades. And so number four, um, not tracking or no, yeah, number four, not tracking your metrics is the fourth mistake that I see beginner traders make. You have to track your metrics. Tracking your metrics will tell you what you're doing in your strategy that's working and what's not working. That is the analytical data that is really reaffirming to look at after you've had a big loss or made a series of mistakes, because then you could say, all right, well, what is working? And then you see in your metrics, okay, this is working or what's not working right now. What do I need to completely stop doing? So I started tracking my trade and I was noticing, well, geez, you know, these entries where I'm buying at high of day, you know, I'm literally getting in like at the high, maybe it's a micro pullback right under 12 and I'm buying at 12. 
am I making money on those trades? And the answer is yes, I am. So this was an example of one that I lost on and I lost fairly epically because I took larger share size, but in total, the strategy still works. This is an outlier and it's to the downside, which is disappointing, but the strategy does work. So the answer for me isn't uh, not to trade these whatsoever. That would be an easy answer, but it, it wouldn't be the correct answer. And that's what my data tells me. So in the case of this stock, um, realistically, the biggest thing that I, I would say the biggest mistake was that I trade with too much share size and I just added way too aggressively, thinking this was going to be the one. And the reason I did that was because I've been trading from a state of FOMO for, I suppose, the last week or so. Um, so this is my 30-day PL. So in the last 30 days, you could see, and this was before uh, today's trades. So I'll import today's trades, but you see, I was down 10,000 yesterday, and then I lost another 20 today. So I'm going to be, my PL is going to be like down here. This is a, this is a, a significant setback for me. Uh, obviously, I'm still certainly net profitable in the last 30 days, which is always good, but it is a significant setback. And it's a loss that will be uh, the biggest red day that I've had in over a year of trading. This is a, you know, it's statistically, this was yesterday and today is twice as big. So, you know, these are, these two days are two of the biggest losses I've had in over a year. Now, I'll say that part of that is because the market has been hotter, so I've been more aggressive. And January, or actually uh, February last month, was the best month I had had in over a year. So, you know, $116,000 in uh, February, plus another 30,000 that I had made so far in March, you know, that's that's pretty solid. I was at about 175,000 on the year before these uh, two days. So now I've dropped myself back down and I'm going to be at, I guess, 100 and well, after today, um, I think I was at 185,000. I was just under 200 grand. So anyways, now I'm going to be at around 150,000 or something like that after these two days, 155,000. It's It doesn't, you know, it's not great. Uh, so, okay. So now um, there's kind of, what could I have done differently big picture to have avoided today? Um Number one, I had several close calls in the last week. These are like tremors before the big, you know, the big earthquake. I didn't scale back my position sizes following those trades. So that wasn't very good in terms of self-reflection. I did my recaps on those red days. You know, I knew I had had close calls, but I continued to allow myself to trade at the edge of my comfort zone, despite the market not rewarding it. The market was not rewarding me trading this aggressively in the last few days. Maybe there was a little shift in the overall market. You know, on another day, that stock might have gone to 16, 18, but today it didn't because the market was just a little softer, a little colder. So the market was not rewarding me trading this aggressively. And I wasn't handling trading this aggressively well. Now, maybe it's because I'm, I've been sick for the last week and I haven't been sleeping well. That's a possibility. It's certainly a contributing factor. You know, I've been taking all this cold and flu medicine. That's, is that a contributing factor? Sure. That could all be contributing factors. You know, I'm not on my game as much as I might be when I'm feeling well. But nonetheless, um, what's happened has happened. So I need to be aware of it. Number three, um, I was looking too closely at my weekly metrics. And what I noticed was a string of consecutive green days. This is a very, very dangerous thing for me. The problem for me is when I notice I've had a green, a, a string of consecutive green days, I tend to get a bit obsessive about not wanting to lose that, um, that string. So it, it's my longest green streak was 56 days. And the fact that I know it was 56 days speaks to the fact that I was counting each one of those days. So, you know, here I'd had this nice green streak. And yesterday, I didn't want to lose it. That's why yesterday, even though I was only down 900, I kept saying, you'll find another trade. You'll be up 1,000 before the end of the day. I was not willing to walk away down $100, even 100 even 50 I didn't want to lose the streak. Now, the, the stock market doesn't care about your stupid green streak. Doesn't care. Doesn't care that you have bills to pay this month. It does not care. So when you start applying your own, you know, BS, it throws off your mental game. 
And now you're pushing hard for a really stupid reason. There's literally no reason to be caring about being down $900. Because I was obsessing about being down $900, I'm now down $30,000 in two days. I would say that's that's pretty literally what happened. Because, you know, I... I wouldn't have, I don't even know if I would have pushed it uh, as hard yesterday if I hadn't been thinking about that. Now, obviously, the trade last week, I was already pretty fired up. So maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration to stay, say it like that, but, but it's not too far off from the truth. So what I, what I was doing really well in January um, and in early February is I was keeping my head down and I wasn't even looking at my metrics. I didn't know how much I was up on the week or the month or the year. I wasn't looking. I didn't want to look. And then I made this mistake of starting to track my PL. So, mistake number five trading your PL. Trading the PL. When you trade the PL, you're not trading the market. Now you're trading your PL. You're staring at your PL. You're staring at where you sit on the day, where you sit on the week, where you sit on the month, where you sit on the year. And that's your focus. When that is your focus, it's like staring, it's like staring at a tree uh, when you're skiing. And then you run right into it. It's it's like, it's just the wrong way to look at it. What you want to do instead is focus on the process of taking the best trades. And then the results will follow. But it's so easy. And it happens so subtly. It's so sneaky. Next thing you know, you're looking more and more and more and more at that PL. And now you're pumping yourself up like, oh yeah, my PL is so great. I'm doing so well. And now it's part of your ego. You're thinking it's like part of your identity. And the second it's threatened with a loss, now so much more is at stake. It's not just $100. It's the green streak. It's the, this is my career. It's the everything else. And that's when it starts to unravel so fast. So um, so, so now I want to talk about um, how to recover. Um, so I'm, I think I sort of, duplicated that slide by accident. But so now I want to talk for a second about how to recover. So I had a, a streak last year where I had five red days in a row. Talk about feeling like a real idiot. Um, lost $22,000, which is less than I lost in just two days on this uh, little cruise. But um, nonetheless, my confidence was shaken. So, so how do I recover? This is sort of the question. Given that I know that I have a tendency to spiral emotionally, it is, man, I can't even tell you how common it is for me to have two big red days back to back. I do this all the time, all the time. I mean, we, I'll just show you like this, this is just how I'm going to be a little critical of myself right now, but this is just how stupid I am. My red days are always clustered together. And schmuck that I am, I, I, I don't change anything. Long red streak, you know, red streak, the red days, they're always clustered together. And then the green streaks, you know, I'll have these long stretches of green days. You know, I, I, here, a couple a couple red days, no big deal. But it's just like, this is just how it's always been. And, and you could see here, literally, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years of historical data. And I have all the broker statements on the website to back this up. So, you know, red days clustered together. It's just, it's so classic. It's just, it's like, I'm, I'm so predictable. It's stupid. Uh, and, and what's stupid about it is that in spite of being so predictable, I fall into the trap every single time. And that's why I honestly will tell you that I don't think I have the aptitude to be a trader. And yet somehow I've done it. Somehow I've made over $10 million trading, but I don't think I have the aptitude because my emotional state of mind is just like, I'm so sensitive to the loss. I would probably have made so much more money if I didn't struggle with this, you know, uh, this issue. So I think for some people, maybe that's a vote of confidence. Like, wow, even if Ross is, you know, as terrible at, you know, this one aspect of trading as he is, he's still able to do this well. Maybe that gives hope for you. You know, I, I don't know. So the game plan following a spiral event. All right. So number one, acknowledge that I'm in a heightened emotional state. Okay. And now what? Apply restrictions on my trading account. I have to. I have to. The fact is, I can't trust myself right now to leave my account with an ability to take 15, 20,000 shares. I cannot trust myself for that. 
So I could take money out of my account. I could draw my account back down to like $25,000 and I wouldn't be able to take much of anything. I would be severely restricted. That's that's a fairly extreme um, tactic, but it can work. There's nothing wrong with that. I could uh, shift my focus to trading just in my small account that has like a thousand bucks in it. And that could work too. The problem with those two possible solutions uh, and whether or not they would work for you is another question. The problem with those two possible solutions is that they do have a real opportunity cost associated with them. Obviously, if we have some really great momentum in a week, I just took too much money out of my account. I can't even really trade it. So what I instead do is I apply restrictions to my trading account. Uh, I could do that by calling my broker and telling them, hey, put a max cap on my account of 5,000 shares. Don't let me trade more than 5,000 shares. And then I'll keep it there for a period of time, which I'll talk about in a second. Step three, I need to practice mindfulness and meditation to reconnect with discipline. Right now, I have a short fuse. I was joking about this yesterday. Like, you know, it it wouldn't like I, I wouldn't recommend crossing me today. Like I, I have such a short fuse. I, I'll snap at anyone. Like you could be the nicest person in the world and I'll snap. So my fuse right now is super, super short. I'm, you know, if I see a muffin that isn't like fully rise, I'm going to throw it against the wall. Like even a muffin could get on my nerves right now. So, and I love muffins. So given that I have a very short fuse, I need to practice mindfulness, taking a deep breath and slowing down when I'm trading. Now I need to think back about some of these mistakes that are the top five biggest mistakes that I made in my trading. And in my, on my worst days, they all come out. On my worst days, I'll trade with too much size. I'll trade with foam. I'll be rushing and chasing the entry. I won't, well, I will track still my metrics, but, uh, and I'll be trading the p and I'll, I'll make all these mistakes on those bad days. I'll just, it just starts to unwind. So practice mindfulness and meditation to reconnect with discipline. So Headspace app on my phone, meditating before trading. But even if I have a big loss uh, tomorrow, I have the restriction on my account, which is going to stop the bleeding. So really the first order of business when you're spiraling, and I would say right now I'm spiraling a little bit. In the last like five trades, I've had some really big losses. So you have to stop the bleeding first and foremost. And that's a huge mistake is that traders don't stop the bleeding. They like in this moment right now, I've already calmed myself down quite a bit, but if I took a trade, I, I like I could go right back to a hundred, a hundred in a second in terms of like, you know, just it could happen so fast. You're right back to that level. So I I have to do something with external controls, and I could do that with uh, the restrictions. Practice the mindfulness. Try to be really calm. Focus on building. Step four: a cushion with small size. Get green and get out. That means usually when I'm in the state of um, sort of a modified quote trader rehab program, I'm focusing on one entry, one exit. Don't add, just get in and get out. Am I leaving money on the table? Maybe. If I had done that today, just gotten in and gotten out, I actually would have been green instead of down 20 grand. But you know, uh, there's other days of course where I would make a lot less if I didn't add. For the sake of trader rehab, it's about building a string of, um, uh, it, it's about building, it's not a string of green days exactly, but it's about building a week of stable trading results where your emotions are down. You're being consistent. You're taking good quality trades. You're showing restraint. And then for me, I begin removing the restrictions after recouping about half of the drawdown. So right now I'm in a $30,000 drawdown, which is the biggest drawdown that I've had in over a year. All of last year, I kept my drawdowns at like 10,000. I kept them pretty minimal. This year I'm at a $30,000 drawdown relative to my account being up almost 200 grand. You know, it's more than 10% drawdown. It's not the end of the world, but it's a drawdown. So I've got to recover. I've got to recoup. This is what I would call a sloppy recovery. Now, this was a couple years ago. I was up hundred grand and then gave it all back. <laughs> so stupid. Then I started to rally back up, uh, as you could see here, and then, you know, blasted through the top. So you know, this was a little sloppy, uh, blasted through the top and then gave back quite a bit more. So by this point here, I was kind of back to where I was here, right? I just had this big move and then sloppy and then back up and then back down and then, you know, started to make progress, but it just wasn't a smooth recovery. 
this felt like a cleaner recovery. This was just this last year um, in November. You know, I got myself up like 45,000 on the month or whatever it was, gave back a little bit, you know, had a couple red days. Okay. And then rallied back and started increasing share size once I recovered. Had a small loss and then was back up at the highs. A little pullback here again. And then again, you know, sort of pulling away. So I suppose they're both similar in a way. But um, one of the things that is important for me is that once I've made back about half the loss, I generally that, that could take, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I had my biggest drawdown ever was 300, about $300,000. That was in 2021, right after GameStop. I made almost a million dollars the week of GameStop, which was incredible. And then the next week on my birthday, I lost $275,000. What did I do on my birthday? I took too much size. I was slamming stocks at the high a day. I was chasing. I was trading with FOMO. I was focusing on my PL. I was crazy. I was crazy. I was trading all over the place. I lost 300 grand in one day, almost. And uh, by the end of the month, I'd made it all back. Within about three weeks, I'd made it all back and finished the month, you know, six figures in the green. So all's well, it ends well. Um, I was trading big. Everything was big then. Now this is smaller. So it's it might take, you know, it, it, I, look, I could, I could make this back in a day. I could make it back in a couple of days, but that's not going to be the focus. It's probably going to take a couple of weeks of trading slow and steady base hits with smaller size. Now, I will tell you that within a week, if I can follow this plan and be slow and steady, a week from now, I'm going to feel a hundred times differently. I'm going to feel totally different than I feel right now. I'm going to feel like a new man. I'm going to be like, oh, finally, I just, I'm going to feel a sense of relief that I've been able to escape this emotion that I'm dealing with right now. These emotions are so hard on us. This is the hardest part about being a trader, these emotions. For me, at least. Maybe other people are better at it, but, um, you know, I don't know. For me, this is the hardest part. And so a week from now, it'll be like all of a sudden, you know, clouds are gray and now the sun is out and the, the grass is green. It just feels so much better, like I'm on the other side of it. And then once I've had five, you know, six days to kind of put some space between me and this event, then next thing you know, because I'm calmer, I start to feel more comfortable letting off those restrictions and I've recouped a little bit of the loss and then I've got my confidence back. And now, you know, if the market's also heating up, the next thing you know, my account's back at the all time highs and now I'm on like a new hot streak, you know, which will last for potentially weeks or months until this all happens again, right? Until we have a stock that goes from $3 to 150 in one day and I only make, you know, 50 bucks on it or I lose on it and I get triggered. And then I start to get sucked into beating myself up and feeling FOMO. And those emotions creep back in and they subtly take over the trading. And then I have a big loss. And then I sit here and I do another episode like this. And I talk to you about how I rebuild. And then I do it. And this is the cycle that happens again and again and again. This is part of trading. There is no escaping it for me. Sometimes I say that this these losses are just a feature of my strategy. It's just a feature of me, of how I trade, because it always happens. I wish that I got to a point where this went away, where I didn't have these days anymore, but nobody doesn't have red. There's no one who doesn't have red days. And, you know, I had a goal this year that I was going to keep my red days really tight. And I've had this slip up here where I've, you know, lost it on a couple of days and it's disappointing, but it's just like not surprising because this happens. And I think it happens to pretty much every trader out there. It's how you deal with it that really is going to be um, a reflection of you. And whether or not you're able to rally back, to have the discipline when you absolutely need it, to follow your rules, right? To follow this game plan, to have the discipline, or if you're just going to keep spiraling and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Because I've seen it go both ways for different people, for different traders. You know, for me... I've always kind of had a point where I finally like capitulate and I submit and I'm like, okay, all right, I suck. Yep. Okay. It's time. I got to check myself into, you know, trader rehab. That's what I call it. I actually have a course that I taught specifically on this. Um, I taught it with Ted who runs the trading psychology program at Warrior Trading. He hosts sessions um, and has taught a bunch of classes for our members. And, you know, he's been so great because he's helped me put 
all the feelings that I have around this into a really nice program, a course that has, you know, actionable steps of like, this is what you do. When you're in this situation, this is what you do. This, this, this is the process you follow. And this is kind of a, the Cliff Notes version of it, I suppose. But, um, you know, as I sit here today, these emotions that I feel in my big account, I'm certainly grateful I'm not down 300,000 like I was in 2021, you know. And I'll, I'll, although on the other hand, in my small account, which only has a thousand bucks in it, I've had losses in there that make me feel pretty much as frustrated as I feel right now, even though it's only like a $300 loss. I'm just like it's it's so it's like it's relative but the feeling is the same for me like it could be 300 it could be 30,000 or it could be 300,000 and the feeling feels the same it's crazy but it, it feels the same so like you know i my brain doesn't really distinguish very well between like the the intensity of the loss it's just the feeling of i screwed up and I'm upset with myself. And that's doesn't matter how much you lose. It's a, it's a terrible feeling. So I hope this episode has helped you better understand my biggest weakness and the biggest struggle that I continue to have as a trader and five of the biggest mistakes that I've made in my own trading, certainly as a beginner, but continue at times to make today and that I've seen so many other traders make all around the world. You know, traders that are part of the community and traders that are just out there. This is just, it's, it's really hard trading is not easy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, right? I'm going to just put it out there and tell you like it is. Now, if you still want to learn, if you're like, in spite of all this, Ross, I still want to learn, then, you know, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up and keep watching these episodes. But, you know, I'm going to put it all out there and I'm going to give it to you real. So this is a real recap. It's a real recounting of uh, a pretty bad day of the year for me, the worst day so far. But, uh, you know, mark my words, six months from now, this is going to be water under the bridge. I, I might not even remember the stock I traded today, even in six months. I mean, even like six weeks from now. So given that six weeks from now, I'm probably not even going to remember today in a significant way. I might as well just stop worrying about it right now and move on. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and check out this other episode that YouTube thinks you are going to love.